Hi everyone, Quilting with Harriet here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up diagonal grid from my creative stitches on my customer's quilt here. And when I set it up originally, I noticed that I had a lot of jump stitches after I cropped. And even though I hit edges, I still had jump stitches at the very top. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of those jump stitches. The technique I'm going to show you works maybe 95% of the time, but um, I'm going to show you how to how to bring those nodes together and I'm going to also show you how to adjust the jump so the machine will continuously stitch or stop and let you pull up the thread be between each, um, each jump stitch. So let me show you the quilt. This is my customer's quilt. It's got birds and little sayings in there and it also has um, what I think is a, is a great element telling me what to put on the quilt. So there's actually a grid here that you can see. So I'm going to come over to my computer and I'm going to zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. So here is my Pro Stitcher Premium. I'm still running version 537. So don't freak out that I don't have Connect 835 or whatever the newest one is. Um, in my world, it works great for me not to be on the internet and the features that I have are enough for me. So I'm just gonna keep it to um, version 537. So uh, one or two buttons might be in a different place on yours, but as long as you know where they are, that's fine. Okay, so I have my area set here and I am going to bring out my pattern. So I'm gonna go file design and I've already had it open. It's called diagonal grid. And this is from my creative stitches. So let me jump down here and zoom in. Oh, I won't zoom in on the pattern. Let me zoom in on that pattern so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, get up here, there, oops. Okay, there's my diagonal grid and you can see up here it says that it's 182 wide by one inch, 0 0.90 in height. I'm gonna change this. I wanna resize this pattern because that's way too many repeats in one area of my throat. So I'm gonna lock my height and I'm gonna change my height from 1.90 to seven inches. And I'm gonna hit enter. And since my lock is active, it means my width will go as well. So there it is now at, um, the width is 672 and the height is seven, seven inches. So I'm gonna go over here to repeat and I'm gonna say fill and you can see that it filled up my screen, but it didn't reach my edges, or there's a large gap in there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that gap. I'm gonna hit vertical. I'm gonna come over here to my follow button. So my, my follow button is attached to my crosshair over here. So when I hit follow and I hit zoom, my little arrow over here, see how it zooms in? Okay, now I can really see that gap in between my rows. So in my vertical, I'm gonna start hitting the minus until that gap closes up and I like it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. What I want is the spacing that's in between my pattern. I want the spacing in between my rows to be about the same. So now I'm gonna hit my refresh button so I can zoom back out. And now I need to fill in the rest of the quilt. So my vertical rows, I wanna fill in the top and bottom. So I'm just gonna add more, okay and then maybe one more. And then my horizontal, I wanna fill in that gap there. So I'm gonna hit horizontal and fill in that gap until it's outside of my window there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna to go to modify because I wanna get rid of everything on the outside of my pink area there. I'm gonna to go to modify crop and I'm gonna crop everything on the outside and you see that I have those edges there. Let's see if that'll close. Okay, it did not close. So I'm gonna move my machine, hit my follow and zoom in. I'm gonna pan over so you can see. And zoom in a little more. Okay, so we have start, stop, start, stop all the way across the top. 
Okay, I want to try and get rid of that. So while I'm in the Modify tab, I'm going to go to Reposition. And I see these keys down here, this nudge here? I'm going to move this pattern down and watch those start and stops get closer together. So I'm just going to hold my finger on it and see them closing in, getting really close. Oh, now they're going back out again. Okay, there it is. See how they closed up? Depending on where you cut the pattern off is whether it's going to close the edges or not. Sometimes it just is too far in between to actually close those edges. So it tries to find a spot, like over here on this, this V over here, it, it was able to close those edges. So if you can't close the edges, so I'll just undo so you can see for a minute. If you can't close the edges, what's gonna happen is the machine will come, it'll start at the green, stop at the red, and depending how you have it set, it'll either start stitching a straight line across and, and resume, stitch straight line, resume everywhere it's cut off, or if you have it set with a zero jump, it's going to stop, let you cut your thread, hit resume, start over again. So you can control your jump stitch. I'm gonna come over here to the setting tab. And over here we have auto jump. So my auto jump is set from the factory at six inches, that's the default, which means I have six inches between, I can have six inches between my two dots for the machine to sew straight across and resume without me having to come over each time and hit resume, resume, resume. If you want to cut your threads each time, instead of having it stitch a straight line, set that jump to zero. And then it'll automatically stop at that red dot and you'll have to cut your thread and then hit resume, let it go to the green, stitch that one, and then repeat that all the way across. Since I'm in my binding area anyway, I don't mind having it stitch that straight line, so I'm gonna set that default to six inches. You can set it anything you want. It's a keypad, you can go up to whatever number that you want, up or down. So that's how I get rid of my, um, my jump stitches between, let's see if I can go redo and maybe it'll get rid of it again. Okay, there it is, I redo. And now I have no jump stitches at the top, so it's gonna stitch straight across for me in one continuous pattern. First thing I'm gonna do now is go baseline so that my pattern turns into one pattern. So let me undo that so I can show you that again. Under my repeat screen, I have 11 horizontal rows and I have 14 vertical rows. As soon as I hit baseline, it's gonna turn into one complete pattern. So baseline, there's one vertical and one horizontal. Now the machine doesn't have to remember, okay, she took five repeats across and we joined them together and now I can stitch it as one and it's gotta go through the process of all that thinking. So when you hit baseline, it knows that it's one complete pattern. And now when I come to the end of the row, because I did baseline it, it's gonna do the stop, cut your thread, hit resume, do your drag and drop, and then hit resume to continue. If you don't baseline, the machine doesn't know that it needs to move the pattern. So um, make sure you always baseline your pattern. So now that I did the, um, the baseline, I'm gonna go into here my file and I'm gonna save. And I don't need the workspace, I don't need the area. It doesn't matter, I can get rid of the area at any time. I'm gonna say save selected. Maybe I can't get this pattern done today. So I created a pattern called A current. I'm currently working on this quilt, so this is where I'm gonna put it to save it. You can come up here to these file folders and you can either hit plus or um, X out and you can add file folders. So the next time that you hit your file design open, the new file folder will be in alphabetical order. So I'm gonna go into my current 
and I put the A in front of there so it's at the top of my, um, my list and not down towards the C's. A current, and um, see, I already saved it here. I'm just gonna do it again since I depleted the last one. And I'm gonna say save. Do you want to overwrite? And I'm gonna say yes. So now I'm all ready to sew this pattern. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this customer quilt done. And then I will be back at the end of the, um, at the end of the quilt so that I'm going to show you how to take your pins out while you're stitching down your basing line on the bottom of your quilt. And I'm going to show you another way that I do my uh, crop the bottom row using um, multi-point instead of two corner measuring um, how much I have left, putting it in a box and all that. So there's more than one way to do multiple things with Pro Stitcher. You'll get used to what you're comfortable with and it'll become automatic. You'll come in each day, you'll turn on your machine, you'll say, oh, I got this, I know how to do this. So um, let me get started and I'll be back with another video how to release your quilt from the bar and how to crop using multipoint. So I will see you back here I don't know, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, who knows how much I can get done. All right, have a good day. Hit the like button if this helped you. Hit the subscribe and the notification so you know when I do come back. Hey guys, I'm not charging for these classes, for, these, for this information. I wish I had this when I first got started. So um, make sure that you help me out here by hitting the like button so others can see these videos and hopefully have some success when they first turn on their machine. Okay, have a good day. Bye.